What's up everyone? My name is Zach and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about books that have dark magic in them. So I came up with this video idea for some of my like Halloween video ideas. Specifically, I just did a video about books with like haunted houses or spooky houses. So I read three books for that video and I had a really good time. I even found a brand new favorite book of all time in that video. Along with that idea, the second like Halloween idea that I had was to read books that I thought might have some dark magic in them. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video today. I read these three books, Black Orchard, Midnight is the Darkest Hour, and finally, I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. We're gonna talk about these books in just a second. Just some quick updates for you guys. I am out of contacts right now, and I, I know that the ring light has bothered some people in the past, um, so feel free to just listen to this video if you still want the content, but the ring light is distracting. I will get contacts soon, and so I can't see it all without glasses or contacts, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to like, I know, I know it's a thing. Uh, and then any other updates? I think that's like the main one that I was like, I should just put this out there. If you haven't already, subscribing to my channel helps me out a ton. A like on the video goes a long way. And I would love to know in the comments, have you read any of these books? Do you have any dark magic book recommendations? I think these things we can read year round. So I would love to hear from you guys, either reviews from these or recommendations that you have based off this video idea. All right, this is gonna be a spoiler free video and I'm just gonna kind of talk about the plot of the book vaguely and then maybe some of the dark magic feelings and then an overall review of the books. As always, these are my opinions. I know in particular, The Invisible Life of Addie Ralu is some people's favorite book. As always, if I don't like a favorite book as much as you or anything like that, uh, please just be respectful of my opinion. I know a lot of you think, Zach, you don't have to say that, but you'd be surprised. Um, so I just, want to put that out there too. Like these opinions are my opinions. And now let's talk about some dark magic. So the first book that I read for this video, I was like, I am tired of saying that I'm going to read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because I think it's been on like 80% of my TBRs over the last two years since I started this booktube channel. So I am happy to say I finally read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Most of you know what this book is about, but in case you don't, I'll briefly tell you what the, the plot is. This is a timeline that kind of goes back and forth in time a little bit. Essentially, it's about a girl named Addie LaRue who is growing up in like, I don't know, the 1600s France? Oh, the eight, it was, it's 1720. I think it starts in like 16 something France. And she is supposed to be married off. And one night she runs into the forest. And although the like wise lady of her village in France said, never pray to the gods that answer after night. Um, she is trying to escape this arranged marriage and essentially she makes a deal with the devil. And the deal that she makes is that, I mean, she doesn't know the consequence of it, but it's that nobody is going to be able to remember her. That is the basic premise of this book. And she just wants to get out of the situation. She'll do absolutely anything. And she prays to a God that answered after night, which she was warned about. So fast forward to the future, which we get at the very start of the book as well. Um, Addie LaRue, every time she spends like more than an hour, I never got a clear definition of how long it had to be. But when she's away from somebody and comes back, they don't remember her. And so the beginning of the book, we get a lot of information about sort of how this deal or magic, dark magic works, like why people can't remember Addie, like if many examples over time of this happening and how that takes a toll on someone to not be remembered. That is the moral of this entire story is how it takes a toll on someone to not be remembered. This is an absolutely beautiful story. Like people are correct when they say this is it. It's just a beautiful story. Like this book approaches humanity more than uh, most books are capable of doing. V.E. Schwab is one of my favorite authors. I have a tattoo on my chest from one of her books. I absolutely love V.E. Schwab's writing. I think overall I gave this book four stars. Every time I talk about books and videos, I like them more. So when I'm talking about it and reflecting, I think and this happens to me sometimes, over time, this will be a 4.5, maybe even a five star. I think I need to take more time to kind of digest the story and probably read it again. One complaint I've seen about this is that it's slow, and I would agree, it is a little bit slow at times and a little bit boring at times. But because we spend so much time with Addie, I mean, she like is also kind of immortal. And so we spend so much time with her and there are just, I guess, boring parts of her life that happen, but we get to know like intricate relationships in her life and 
all these things. Oh, the other very important part of the plot is in, in the present day, she walks into a bookshop and she's gotten into this habit of stealing things because she's able to do that because people don't remember her. And so she tries to steal this book and she leaves the bookshop and this guy runs after her and is like, hey, you can't take that book. You, you, you stole it. And like she walked out of the bookshop and back into it. So it broke the like dark magic elements and he remembered her. And that's like, you figure that out really early on. It's also in the synopsis, it's not a spoiler. That's like the whole idea is that one day someone does remember Addie LaRue and what does that mean? Like, how did that happen? The reveal of that is really, really cool. I also really liked the ending of this book. I imagine there are some people who didn't like the ending. It's a little bit open-ended and it's not the most happy ever after, but I loved that. So yeah, in reflection, probably a 4.5. I'm tempted to change it on my spreadsheet to a 4.5 since in reflection, I liked this book a lot more than maybe I thought. And the dark, the dark magic elements of this are, is the deal with the devil. Like we really get to know, like they call him Luke for Lucifer. We really get to know him well in the story and the the darkness and the dark magic. And th this the concept that this deal was made for her to escape such a terrible situation. And there were deep, deep consequences of that. Not being remembered as a human is a lot of people's worst fears. And we are seeing that play out on page and the toll it can take on someone over like a century. So yeah, very good book. I definitely recommend it. Um, I would just be aware that there are some parts that are slow. And I also think that it's a book that you need to sit with and probably read again. So yeah, I did it. I finally read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. So let's talk about another book that I read for this video. I read Midnight is the Darkest Hour. This is the new book by Ashley Winstead, who wrote The Last Housewife, which I've read. I actually DNF'd that book. And In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife, which I loved. I gave that book five stars. So this is her newest novel. I gave this book five stars. I loved this book. I devoured it. There is a caveat to that. So let me tell you briefly what this book is about, because I think you don't actually need to know a lot going into it. In fact, knowing nothing going into this book will aid you even more. So I'm going to give you very limited knowledge about this. So essentially, this is about two people in Louisiana that in the description says they're from opposite sides of the tracks. And that is true. Like she is a pastor's child and he is essentially like the devil of the town's kid. So he is notorious for being a bad person and she is supposed to do everything right. And yeah, um, hold on while I make sure see what's in the synopsis. Okay, in reflection, I do this sometimes when I don't trust myself to give you guys a good like summary. I'm gonna read you guys what the information that's given to you because it's actually pretty good. And then I'm gonna like comment on it and give you my review. So it says, a killer haunts a small Southern town and two at outcasts, the preacher's daughter and the boy from the wrong side of the tracks hold the key to uncovering the truth. For fans of Verity and a flicker in the dark, disagree and disagree. Uh, I would not say this is for fans of Verity or A Flicker in the Dark, and I've read them both. A Flicker in the Dark, I DNF'd. Verity, I read all the way through. I disagree with that. Um, Midnight is the Darkest Hour is a twisted tale of murder, obsession, obsessive love, and the beastly urges that lie dormant within us all, even the God-fearing folk of Bottom Springs, Louisiana. True. That is a very, very good description of this book. In fact, it's enough. <laughs> but in her small hometown, librarian Ruth corner has always felt like an outsider even as her beloved father rains fire and brimstone warmings from the pulpit of holy fire baptist unfortunately for ruth the only things the townspeople fear more than god and the devil are the myths that haunt the area like the story of the low man a vampiric figure said to steal steal into sinners bedrooms and kill them on moonless nights when a skull is found deep in the swamp next to mysterious carved symbols bottom springs is thrown into uproar and ruth realizes only she and everett an old friend with a dark past have the power to comb the town's secret secret underbelly and see and search of the true evil a dark and powerful novel like fans have come to anticipate from ashley winstead dark is midnight is the darkest hour is an examination of the ways we expect love religion and stories to save us the lengths we have to go in order to take back power and the monstrous work of being a girl in this world this book slaps let me this book is so good like just reading that synopsis and thinking about all the things that i went through reading this book. It is so good. Another thing I want to point out is that there is a 
a blurb on the cover that says, Where the Crawdad Sing meets Twilight meets Thelma and Louise in this brilliantly reali realized, totally original thriller. All of that is true, except for I actually didn't shelve this as a thriller. I shelved it as a mystery. And I know some of you are like, well, what's the difference? I feel like a mystery is just slower and not as sus suspenseful. And I think some of the negative reviews of this have been that the book is too slow. So maybe go in with the expectation that it is more character driven than plot driven. There is definitely suspense because there's this mystery that you're trying to solve about this body that was found in the bottom of a swamp. That is that is true. Uh, when it says... Where the Crawdad Sing meets Twilight meets Thelma and Louise, it is that, that, and that. Like, that is 100% accurate, and it it's going to get you in unsuspecting ways. I love this book. Like, I already want to read it again. Both main characters are very well developed. They're very flawed. This is a story of two morally gray, imperfect humans, and I think that's why I loved it so much, because Ashley Winstead is not afraid, kind of like The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and Black River Orchard, maybe the dark magic in life is the, the the true and pureness of humanity that we all experience but don't all talk about. I think that that's the thing that connects all three of these books, I've just realized. But that is kind of the dark magic of this book. First, there's this story, this myth of the low man who supposedly lives in the swamp, is this vampiric figure. The whole town is afraid of him. They want to do everything they can to keep him away. And that kind of haunts the story and is kind of the dark magic. There is another element of dark magic that I cannot say, but the moment you get about 30 pages in, you're going to you're going to realize what I'm talking about and you're going to wonder about that thing the whole entire book. This ending is also amazing. I just please read this book. Like I will say it's not for everyone. It's it, I feel like there were times where I was like some people are probably going to find this corny or cheesy and I didn't. I ate it up. So I guess just be aware that there might be things that you find corny or cheesy but I ate this book up. I absolutely loved it. Five stars, probably one of my favorite books of the year, which both this video and the last video have books that are probably gonna be favorites of the year. And that brings me to Black River Orchard by Chuck Wendig, another likely favorite of the year. So this book is probably, uh, also gave it five stars. I guess I should just say that right off the bat. Absolutely love this. Another top favorite of the year. That's what's made me so excited about this video and the last one is that I found favorites in both of them. It just feels like a true success and really tapping into books that were outside of my comfort zone normally that I really loved. So I've discovered like a whole set of books that I could possibly love in the future. So I'm very thankful that I decided to do these two videos. So Black River Orchard is probably the most quintessential dark magic book of these three. And essentially all you need to know about this is it takes place in a small town. I don't know where that town is. I don't think it says. I th it just says it's in a in an autumn town of Harrow. The, the town's name is Harrow. Also, another thing I want to say about this is that um, the audio of this is really, really good. It's a full cast, I believe. Yeah, it's a full cast, and one of my favorite audio narrators plays one of the characters, Brittany Presley. I love her audio narration. Yeah, I recommend this on audio. It's a pretty big book, too. So if that is something that's been putting you off, check out the audio because it's really, really good. I read the other two physically, I guess I should note. Um, oh, no, I didn't. I read Midnight is the Darkest Hour physically, and I listened to the audio of The Invisible Life of Addie Ruler, which is also a very good way to intake that book. So Black River Orchard essentially is about this town where an apple, apples have been a thing throughout the town for a really long time. And you get a lot of backstory about the apple orchard and the apples in particular, this very specific apple called the Ruby Slipper. And present day, what is happening is people are eating this apple and getting addicted to it. This book is a commentary on addiction and addiction in different forms, like, like screen addiction, like people addiction, mostly kind of tapping into like drug addiction. And there's not a whole lot of like when you think about drug addiction and alcoholism and the things that that happen to people and the way that they act that doesn't really start unfolding until the end i mean it's in, in sense of like people being intoxicated that stuff doesn't really start happening until the end this is a very 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 slow descent into madness and it's great like you slowly slowly fall into madness but because the author builds up so much good character development you get to know these characters and their stories because there's several different characters you get to know them so well and because of that you slowly watch them like fall into madness 
I really, really love this book. Like Midnight is the Darkest Hour and Black River Orchard were probably my favorite two of the video, though Addie LaRue is not far behind. But th this book is just smart. It's smart. Everything it does is really well done. Words that I would use to describe this would be strong, strong character development. There's not a big plot. I mean, you do find out what's happening with the apples, why it's happening, and uh, like, I guess a solution. So you kind of go through the plot in that way, but it's really a literary horror, like a very slow descent into this madness. I just, please read it. You don't really need to know anything else going into it. In fact, I didn't know anything going into this book. You want to get to know these characters, okay? There's, so, like I said, there's several different ones, several different storylines that will eventually intertwine because they're in this small town. Eventually, characters that you know really well will show up in other people's stories. There's really creepy imagery in this that, oh, it's just perfect. It's the perfect fall or winter read. Really, you could read it any time of the year, but if you're looking for something to sink your teeth into, uh, like an apple, this, this is it. Like, please read this book. I, I wish I had more to say about it, but really, I think this is something that you just need to experience. And again, the dark magic here is like the apple and what it's doing to people. You are getting the perspective, the main drivers of the story, their perspectives are people who are not eating the apple. So for whatever reason, these people have not ate the apple. And then you see how what it looks like from their perspective from the people who have fallen into this addiction of the apple and they can't stop and the, the things that they will do to get the ruby slipper apple read it it's really really good so in summary the books that i read for this video were invisible life of Addie larue which i gave 4.5 stars on a reread it might end up being a five star I definitely want to read this book again dark magic elements of this like for all of them <laughs> are about humanity, what it means to be human. That's the theme of the whole thing. For Addie LaRue specifically, I will say the dark magic elements are uh, like the, 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 the fear of not being remembered and people forgetting you. And then Midnight is the Darkest Hour is the darkness of humanity, religion. Um, it's also like has like some supernatural feeling sort of elements. I won't say if they're actually supernatural or not, because that's something that you need to discover throughout the book, because that's like kind of a theme that you're wondering the whole time is if something supernatural are happening or not. So I'll say like supernatural feeling elements. And then the dark magic of Black River Orchard is the, the slow descent to madness. This video was a success. I had such a good time. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I want to give a special thank you to the Mostly Ghostly crew for supporting my channel every month through the channel membership. Together, we do all kinds of things throughout the month. Now we're doing like a reading challenge. We do our own little like reading prompts and games throughout the month. They get to vote on content. We have a hangout that we do every month where we jump on a live stream and hang out and talk about life and books. And we read a book together every other month. It's a great place to be. So if you're interested in joining the channel membership, there's a link for that below. And a very special thank you to you for watching this video. Don't forget to leave me a comment about your favorite dark magic books or any comment I'll take. I would love to hear from you guys what you're reading, how you're doing. I just want to talk to you guys. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Still can't see